as a result of some of the comments I've been receiving, decided to create another video in my Psyche series covering the psychological aspects of what a fact is. Now, I've already done a video on my finite mean of what a fact is. And what I mean by that is my correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, closure on what a fact is. And you can look that up on my channel. It's about a half hour long. I go through all the necessary background on it. I look it up, show different meanings. I show legal meanings, etc., etc., And then I give my correct sentence structure uh, contract closure on what a fact is. Now, I did go into the psychology a little bit in that video. But for those who haven't seen it, haven't taken the time to look it up, or for those who are just new and haven't gotten to it yet, and also for those who have been studying for a while but still seem to be stuck in a rut, this is one of the most important things uh, that uh, that you can get closure on as far as this technology goes, to know what a fact is, to have confidence that you know what it is and you can convey that to another contract party. It's very important, if not the most important thing in the whole shebang. Now, what is correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you may ask, and it's also known as quantum grammar. Um, well, the long answer, I think, would be it's a grammar technology brought to the public by Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller, who, with my knowledge, passed away uh, in 2018. It's a grammar technology that is, quote-unquote, mathematically certified in so much as there's a math interface to it, a concept to it, where if you do it correctly, if you do it with correctness, the sentence that you write forwards, the facts in that sentence will maintain their integrity in the same value if you read it backwards. Just like 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. And there are, you know, some very simple mechanics that go into that, which I've explained ad nauseum in dozens of other places on this channel. Almost 500 videos, folks. It's all here for you if you want it. So the short answer to what is correct sentence structure, communication, part, say syntax, grammar, is that it is a grammar of closure. Meaning in the fiction, and by the fiction I mean adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, plain English fiction babble, when you look a word up in a dictionary, you will find multiple meanings for that word. Multiple meanings. So the, you know, the overarching concept is if you get a contract through the mail or whatever, and you're looking at it, you don't, and if you don't get a concordance with it, if you don't get a dictionary with that paper from whoever the author is that sent it to you, you really don't know what those words mean. It's all based on assumption presumption. With correct sentence structure, you would have a dictionary with your mathematically certified sentences. You would have closure on all the words in that contract. And it would be all included, or at least be available to the reader and all contract parties involved with that document. That's what correct sentence structure is. The basic uh, overarching concept is one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one congruency, one function. Um, I've said this countless times. That's why it rolls off my tongue so well. So that's what the, the grammar is. And the most important thing is the facts. Not only how to position them, but how to certify them. A fact can only be a fact if you can certify it. As you can see at the bottom of my screen, this is my finite mean for the word fact in my co-dictionary. For the fact of this finite mean is, with this claim of this 
contract with the cognition of this whole with the value of this matter with the certification by the contract parties, period. And then to mathematically certify it, read it backwards, for the contract parties of the certification are with this matter of the value with this whole of the cognition with this contract of this claim with this finite mean by the fact, period. So going forwards, what a fact is, is basically it's a claim of a contract because everything is contract with the cognition, meaning the understanding, the comprehension of the whole of the matter. Rule one rule equal judge mechanics. Very simple judge mechanics. The whole of the matter, and that's the value of it. You must also have a cognition of the value of the matter. And then if there are however many contract parties, uh, if everyone has this cognition, then it's certified by the contract parties and we can move forward with contract because everyone is in participation with the facts of that contract. If you need to, please listen to that again because this is where the psychology comes in. Now, I got a comment uh, on one of my mini classes. It was the syntax mini class, well, one of the syntax mini classes, where I was syntaxing a sentence with the word demon in it, D-E-M-O-N. And the viewer asked, to paraphrase, why isn't demon a fact? And then they said something to the effect that they knew that demons were real because they've witnessed them or experienced them. Well, that's all well and fine. I think David Wynn Miller said, again to paraphrase, for the specific to paraphrase for the specific fact of a fact is with the claim by the one fact. Period. Meaning, if I have an experience, and I'm talking theoretical. If I have an experience with a uh, flying saucer with uh, 10 foot tall lizards that come out of it. And I experience that. And uh, they come down and, and we, we, we have some coffee. And we have a conversation about the awesome book, Worlds Beyond the Poles. And then we finish our conversation and then, and then they leave. That's a fact to me. I participate with that fact. I've certified it with through my port of sensation, mind, body, spirit. I've certified that this is a fact. It did happen to me. Therefore, uh, if I want to write contract with them, they're a fact to me. So I'm going to write contract with them. I can, right? I can do that. Now, if I tell this story to you, and if you are a discerning and logical individual, you probably won't participate with those things as facts because you can't certify it. I have to be able to certify it to you. So I must have evidence of these facts if you and I are going to contract. And this experience happened only to me. You had nothing to do with it, but yet we're going to contract. And for some reason, we have to have a contract that includes 10 foot tall uh, lizard aliens. In order for you to participate with 10 foot tall lizard aliens as a fact, I have to prove it to you that they exist. Just like I can prove to you that this cup exists or this symbol exists or this phone or this shirt or these headphones. Do you see what I'm getting at here, folks? So if I cannot provide uh, what is acceptable evidence to you to get you to say, okay, yeah, that, that really did happen. I, I understand. I, I participate with that as a fact. You know, you've given me photos. You've shown me a video. Uh, you even, heck, you even called up the 10 foot tall uh, lizards on your cell phone and uh, a video, video call and I, I spoke to them. So yeah, I, I believe it. I believe they exist. I believe they exist. Sure. 
now the facts have been certified. You and I have certified, and we have a cognition of the whole with the value of the matter. Now we can move forward with our contract, and here are the certified facts. Now, if I don't have photographs or video or their phone number or whatever, and all you have to go on is my word, most likely you are not going to participate with that as a fact. So therefore, we will not be contracting with that word as a fact because you would not, you know, justifiably so, you would not be participating with that word as a fact because there's no proof of it. And we can move that same concept over to demon, where the, the viewer said that they had experienced demon as a fact. You know, that's fine. That's their fact. But unless they provide proof to me of that, pictures, video, uh, you know, just like I said, a continuance of the evidence. If they cannot provide that, then I'm probably not going to be participating with it as a fact. And ladies and gentlemen, don't, I highly recommend not getting offended if people don't believe, people who don't know you don't believe such claims that you make because think about it you know asking someone to asking to take someone at their word these days without knowing them is ludicrous that's what the fiction system wants you to do the fiction system system just wants you to shut up and do what you're told and believe and follow the science or whatever without question it's the same thing no it is for the proof of the claim is with the claimant you have to be able to prove your claims. Otherwise, there are no facts. Even if you use 100% correct sentence structure, it's all correct, and you write something out to me, I still won't participate with your contract if you cannot certify what demon is as a fact to me and prove it. I'm just not going to be contracting with you. And you can put these things over into, as I said, the science or religion, politics, it's, it's, all the, it's all along the same uh, concept. You have to be able to prove what it is you're saying if you want other contract parties to participate with your facts as facts. It's that simple. That's the psychology of it. You have to, be, you have to set a criteria for what a fact is, and you have to be able to apply that to everything across the board. You can't have criteria for this cup as a fact and then not apply the same criteria to demon as a fact. It's one and one is one. Rule one, rule equal. Judge mechanics. The same uh, certifications must be applied across the board. There are no exceptions. And so that's kind of the thing that uh, hems people up with correct sentence structure is they want to give special consideration to things like God or, you know, aliens or demons or, you know, these types of fringe concepts. It's perfectly fine if you want to participate with those things of, as facts within your own construct. But you can't go around expecting others to join in with you if you, don't, if you aren't able to prove that the same way that you can prove what a cup is or, you know, etc., etc. Well, this, I'm not going to make this a long video. I'm just, uh, I just wanted to put this one out there just sort of as an as a addendum, an addendum to the finite mean of the fact video that I did and, you know, the countless other videos that I did on the psychology of how to create a correct sentence structure claim and what you need to do so. This one is specifically focused on the creation and certification of facts. So, of course, the most important thing is to have closure on a fact, what a fact is. And then the next important thing is to learn the grammar. Can I stress that enough? And if he, actually, if the individual who asked the question uh, would contact me and do workshops, they would probably grasp this a lot faster. And they would be able to answer their own question within a month, probably. But that's just a guess on my part. Um, if you do want to participate with a workshop, if you want to apply for a workshop, hit me up at the email address uh, at the bottom of your screen right now. And uh, I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult. And you can ask me whatever you want to do, uh, whatever you want to ask. And uh, we'll see if this is what you want to do. 
Also, there are memberships for this channel. You can click on the join button below this video and check that out. Uh, the tier 2 memberships get exclusive content every week, not available to the public. And uh, that about does it. I try to put out two, at least two videos a week. Uh, one of them is a comments video where I address comments that you, the viewer, leave. And also the Now Space News every Saturday at 23-1100 hours. It does a, it's a weekly uh, syntax news show with uh, some other added bonuses in there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful uh, to your cognition of fa what facts are. If you have any further questions or you'd like to get serious about studying and you want to really uh, move forward with this, and again, the value of a thing is what you ascribe to it. What you put in is what you get out. If you just stay on the fringe of what all this is and you don't actually try and put your toe in the water, then you're probably probably going to be asking the same questions this time next year. If I'm still here next year. All right. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.